In this issue of Real Magic, Cosmo talks with Garrett Thomas about his life as a street magician, his time studying with Cellini, and his desire to have a positive impact on the magic community. Cellini taught me two things, really two big things. The first thing he taught me was, you know, when I started, when I spent that five years with him working on the streets and, you know, being friends, is he taught me how to be free. You know, the, the streets, you know, you, once you get this thing down, right, and you start making real money, it, everything becomes easier, you know. I mean, and you can travel wherever you want to go. You can, you can perform wherever you want to go. Like you can go to Europe. You can go, uh, you know, to California or New Orleans or Key West or Chicago, all those places I've gone to. So I was truly free, you know, uh, as close to free, I think, as you can be. And uh, he also taught me one other big lesson, and that lesson was is, uh, to not end up like him. I, I, I say that with love. You know, he, he was poor, and he was sick, and he hated life, and he hated magicians. He never really felt that he got the respect from magicians that he deserved. I never really understood those feelings because he, he was loved by magicians. I mean, people who knew him just loved him. All the magicians, you know, he's a, he's a legend. That to me now that you say that, it, it makes me realize why you actually stayed a major part of, of the magic community. So you have this show and you're doing this, but at the same time, yeah. you have this skill set now. Yeah. So I'd come home from the road. Okay. I'd be in New Orleans and work for two weeks, and I'd come home and I'd have nothing to do. And now I'm with Cellini, and I'm producing the artistry performing volume one, part, volume two, part three, which are here at, at Real Magic. You can watch them. And uh, we shot some lectures and stuff with them. And so now I come home, and uh, I'm producing this stuff. And it gave me something to do for, those time, for the times I wasn't on the road. So then I started producing other people's stuff, like Jeff Williams and, you know, and your stuff. I mean, and, and uh, started to develop, I think, a pretty good reputation of being a good, honest guy who's going to do, do fairly good work in the industry and produce good products for people. And that's how that whole thing came. So, I mean, that's what I mean is that you took his advice to heart and you had these plan Bs, this, uh, this way to stay connected to the magic community. Yep this way to uh, give back. If anything did happen, you couldn't perform any, any, anymore. You at least had this other way of uh, making a living that you, you, know, you wouldn't be starving yourself. Yeah. Uh, he, he, you, know, you heeded his warning. Yeah, I, you, know, I did, I, you know, I didn't want to end up like that. And yeah. I, I, I may still end up like that. I, you know, I'm, I'm in, I am in the magic industry. It's not like I'm making, <laughs> I'm not getting rich here, guys. I'm just, just, please keep subscribing, I need your five bucks, uh, <laughs> you know, but so around 2007 is when the real magic thing started because I couldn't, I was producing all these products, but uh, sometimes I'd come home and I didn't have any work, I, there would be nobody to produce, you know, I didn't have uh, any new, new, new projects scheduled, so I thought, well, what can I do where I have projects all the time? Well, I'll just work on the same project over and over and over and over. And that's where Real Magic came in. Uh, Tim Toronto uh, was working for Murphy's and he called me and said he had this idea about doing a video magazine that was on DVD. And in 2007, that's when we started Real Magic. We've been around for, uh, well, what, 11 years? Uh, 12 years? Almost 13, 12, yeah. almost 13 years, yeah. So we've been doing this a long time now. Of course, everyone knows about Real Magic because that's how they're, they're seeing yeah. this right now. So we don't have to talk about it too much, but is there, there anything about that choice and and uh, or even just helping out other magicians you know like with their own products as well what I've, i i hope magicians gain a lot from real magic and all the products that we've produced i know that the, the stuff we produce for you like stand up money and uh, these are classics in magic now and when i started producing products i want and we did the artist street performing the very first thing we did the artist street performing is about your life as a performer, it's not about a magic trick. You know, it's not a, a product that you buy, oh, I'm gonna do this trick. That's not what that does. It, it teaches you the important lessons uh, because you, don't, you only can do so many tricks. It teaches you, you know, 
about bu building crowds and about crowd management, all of those kinds of things that are important. Those are the, always the kind of projects that I was attracted to. You know, uh, the, the, when we did together uh, Live at the Jailhouse, also that's a, also available on Real Magic, taught people how to get work in restaurants, taught people how to keep jobs in restaurants, well, taught them all the important things about working in a restaurant, being a, one of those walk around, professional walk around guys. Those are the kinds of projects I always loved. So Real Magic, was kind of like that because you, you get all the tricks, all those kinds of things, all those, all that stuff in Real Magic, which is we all love to learn new stuff. But it also gives all the theory, like your column or, or Tyler uh, Erickson's column or uh, you know John Armstrong's small, uh, small things that make a big difference. All of those things are the things that I'm really attracted to and I hope magicians are attracted to because those are the things that actually make you better. My, my job as a producer has always been to produce a product that's a real working thing, something you can actually do that, that makes you better. Also in issue 52, Kainoa Harbottle returns and demonstrates how doing something you don't like can actually be beneficial. Now there's something in coin magic that I don't like doing. And those are what we usually call wipes. Have you ever seen magicians do these wipes sometimes? They look a little awkward, right? There's all these sort of like changing overs of things and blah, blah, blah. And um, it can look a little awkward with these wipes or also known as equipments. But I found an equipment that I like and I'd like to share it with you now. It's not one that you're, it doesn't look like a really big, gigantic, wavy, wavy move working out a classic palm, the finger palm, and the old fashioned thumb palm, all these other kinds of techniques. It's very simple and it's a great way to actually start. That's what I use it for. It's what I call the push through equipment or the push through wipe. David Regal compares effects side by side. Tyler Erickson shares more advice on tension and relaxation. And Garrett Thomas returns to discuss the importance of being your own Mr. Miyagi. One of the scenes in Karate Kid uh, was this well, it wasn't just one scene, it was a lot of scenes where he's waxing the car and he's painting the fence and, you know, he didn't know he was practicing. Uh, he didn't know that he was training. And uh, in that, he built up his muscle memory. Be consciously aware of all of your actions. And this is not just going to help you in magic, it's going to help you in life. That don't grab the deck of cards unless you can fully see the path to it. Uh, even when you're walking around the house, what I don't like to do is just start moving and, and flailing. And, you know, these are people that uh, you would consider clumsy and they just didn't think their movement through. Uh, so I don't reach for anything until I know exactly where it is and what I'm going for. And then I can just grab it with intent and be able to bring it out. Uh, you know, and these type of options will help you routine where the objects go. Because if this pen has to always be in that position, well, then every time you put it away, it goes there. And if you do it all day, if you do it everywhere you go, if it's always in that position, uh, even when you're not performing, then it becomes burnt into your body. It'll be your muscle memory, and it's going to be something that you can just automatically do. As always, we've got three tricks to teach you. In this issue, there's one from John Luca and two rubber band effects from Vincent Mendoza. Now keep in mind, we're going to transfer from the front of the rubber band here through the first strand there and then all the way off. Just like that in one smooth move. 